impromptu tutorial to the Hotline Miami WAD editor. I've been getting a lot of messages saying that people still don't really understand it or get how to use it. And, uh, I don't know. I've been herfing and derfing, I guess. You know, just beating around the bush. I'm finally getting to it. Um, so, uh, the first step is downloading the Hotline Miami WAD editor. Go to this GitHub link. I'll put it in the description. This page might look confusing to some people, but just go to this little releases link down here. It says six tags or maybe more after this video comes out, but you go to releases. And then here, you're already at the most recent version. So just, you know, we want to download the newest version. Um, and then there's this little drop down called assets. And then this is the download links. Here they are. So, you know, you have your Windows X64, Windows X32, and the Mac Universal binary. But um, if you're on Windows, download that. I'm on Mac right now, and I already downloaded it. But I'm going to download it again, because why not? And once it's downloaded, and you'll have to unzip it if you're on Windows. I'm on Mac. It just automatically does it. Um, and then you just double-click it to launch. Oh, hold up. Okay, so once the once the app opens, you'll be greeted with this screen. There's really not much here. It just there's this button that says set base wad. Um, because to mod Hotline Miami, uh you need it needs a you know, a link to the actual like all the all the files and stuff, so um I'm just gonna set this path uh for Steam, it's Steam, Steam Apps, Common, Hotline Miami 2, and then in there, there's a there's a WAD, but I'm on Mac, so it's in a weird spot for me. I just have it in my documents folder, because I do this a shit ton. Um, so yeah, once you've set your base WAD path, now you'll see in this, in this left side of the window, all these folders. If you use the WAD Explorer, it, it, it looks very similar. And for this tutorial, I'm just going to be replacing a sprite. So I'm just going to go to the cop, or I'm just going to go to Pardo's um, text or sprite page. And you can see it's, it does a way better than the Watt Explorer. You know, you can actually, like, play these animations back. For this, for this, uh, for this tutorial, I'm just going to be replacing the... Um, or no, I'll hold on, I want to do the sun. For this tutorial, I'm going to replace the sun's um, walking magnum animation. So this one, he just, you know, he just walks with the magnum, but I'm going to change it. I'm going to, I'm going to do my own little sprite swap for just this sprite, only this one. Um, so to do so, you go to this, this top menu bar at the top here. You know, you have file, resource, list, um, but what we're, we're, what we're interested in, since we're working with this playersun.meta file, um, we're going to go to this meta menu button, and you see we have a bunch of options relating to sprites. We can import a sprite, shi uh, sprite strip. We can export a sprite to a, a sprite strip. And we can export it to a GIF. We can export all the sprites. That means every single sprite in this list here. It'll export it to a sprite strip, which is pretty useful. Um, and then there's some other options I'm not going to get into. But what we're interested in is just editing this sprite. What I'm going to do is actually get the sprite out of the WAD editor. or out of, I'm going to extract the sprite from the game files just so I can just work on this single animation isolated. So to do so, I'm going to go to Meta. And I'm going to just export the sprite to a strip. Just this sprite. And I'm just going to call it it already names it for you, which is handy. SBR Sun Walk Magnum Strip. I'm just going to save it. What it's going to look like now is if I go to my documents folder and find the, the PNG, if I preview it, or if I open it in preview and zoom in, it's put all the uh, frames of the sprite in a like horizontal row. So 
every frame is right next to each other. And so instead of working with entire sprite page or entire texture pages, you can just work on this row of, of images, um, which might, might, might be helpful to some people. But what I'm going to do to this image is I'm going to make his magnum a little, just a little bigger, you know, because this, this magnum looks pretty wimpy. I think, I think he could use an upgrade. So I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to cut and I'm going to come back to my, my new sprite. Okay. And I'm done spriting. And as you can see, I've, uh, I've had a little, a little extra muzzle velocity to, uh, the sun's magnum. Um, if you compare it to the actual, the, um, the original, I've actually made the individual frames of the sprite larger. They're side by side, one to one. But um, this this sprite now takes up more space. How to do that? You know, I use a sprite, but you know, other other stuff like GIMP can also do it. It's a little harder, but you can still make sprites bigger and stuff, or animations larger. But anyways, with my new sprite, I'm gonna put this back into the Watt editor. So to do so, we're gonna go back to the Watt editor. We're gonna go back to the menu bar and go to Meta, and we first did export sprite to strip. Now we're going to go to import sprite from strip. So export, import. You know, that's the, that's the convention, is you export the sprite, and now you're going to import a sprite. So I'm going to find that, that sprite I made. I called it SPR Walk Magnum Long Magnum. I'm just going to click open. And now we're greeted with a window that prompts us to, at the bottom here, specify the frame count of this animation. Um, I think it's eight frames. Yeah, that looks good. One, two, three, four, five. yeah, eight. It's, you can, you can tell when it, when you get to the right number, cause it, it looks right. Um, and there's this toggle here, overwrite collision. It's optional. This is a player animation. It's not really, you don't really need to overwrite collision for player animations. It's not really necessary. So don't worry about that. Just leave that unticked. And now I'm going to click import. In the top left, this little thing says compiling, and now it's compiling the new texture sheet with our new sprite added to it. So as you can see here, our animations finally is plopped in after it, it went to 100%. And I play it back. That looks pretty good. <laughs> this gun's a little large. That's, that's pretty nice. And I also need to edit his attack animation because... You know, when he when he attacks, his gun's gonna like shrink or something. That looks kind of weird. So uh, I'm gonna do that real quick. I'm gonna specify the frame count. How many is this? This looks like seven frames. Okay, so I'm gonna import that. It's compiling with the new attack animation. Nice. I spent a long time optimizing that algorithm, so uh, hire me, Facebook. <laughs> and ooh, and oh, so that's that's what it looks like. That looks pretty. Bam! Oh, that's got some power. Wow. Let's loop that. Bang! 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 Oh yeah, that looks that looks good. All right. Um. So that looks pretty good. I'm not gonna worry about the uh, the actual Magnum Sprite in this weapons.meta. Uh, yeah, why not? For completeness sake, let's let's do that. So let's, I'm gonna go to meta, import sprite. Um, what did I call it? SPR magnum long magnum. Oh yeah, okay, so this is only one frame, so I'm gonna leave it there. And, ooh, this is actually, this is a good opportunity to bring up uh, collision overriding. Um, I'm actually gonna wanna tick over a collision for this because um, if I don't, it's going to use the old collision mask for the magnum, which is, which ends like about here. It's only like this big, but my new magnum is way bigger. So, um, when the player tries to pick up the gun, it's not going to, it's the, it uses the actual gun's image as the, like, you know, if you're, if the gun is touching your player, you pick it up. So, uh, for weapons, you actually want to tick overwrite collision to uh, make it work. So 
I'm going to click import. That was pretty quick. Um, and you can now you can preview the sprite sheet page. It's all wacky now. This not, looks nothing like it used to. Um, but it all works. It all figures itself out. So that's pretty nice. Um, and now, uh, now I've completed my mod. I've imported and ex I've exported and imported sprites. Um, and I think I think my mod is done. I'm ready to ship. So I'm gonna go up here to file. And there's open patch, but now I'm going to save this patch. So I'm just going to save this in documents. I'm going to call it uh, <laughs> large magnum dot patch wad. Yeah, the, the, it'll add the extension for you. So I'm just going to click OK. And all right, we're done. I'm gonna put this in the Hotline Miami mods folder. You basically, you on Windows, you go to Documents, My Games, and then Hotline Miami 2. Um, on Mac, it's this folder path. Um, and so, and then you're gonna see this, this little, this folder called Mods. If you don't see it, just make it. And you're gonna go into this Mods folder, and I'm going to put my new mod that I just made into it. What did I call it? Large Magnum. Boom, it's in there, and now I'm going to launch the game and see what happens. Okay. This looks pretty good. I'm just going to play this Bob's level. What? Okay. Um, hopefully everything worked. That looks pretty good. You can see the uh, Magnum Sprite is a little bit bigger than it used to be. Let me pick it up. Oh boy, look at that. Look at that bad boy. Oh, it's a bad guy. Let's get him. Actually, I want to see the, the shooting animation first, because, alright, you know, you got the walking animation, that works. But let's see the shooting. Oh, that's got some kick. Let's let's wipe this motherfucker. <laughs> Didn't stand a chance. I want to I want to show off the shooting animation more because I think it's cool. That's so good. Oh, you could just sit here and shoot forever. <laughs> All right, well, uh, hope this tutorial helped. Hope you learned a thing or two. And uh, happy modding.